Updating you on the uh, news story that's breaking at this moment, British uh, citizen and aid worker Alan Henning has purportedly been beheaded by ISIS uh, in Syria. We have in our newsroom now the video of this event. Obviously, we're not going to show you the more gory aspects of it, but we do want to show you the tape that's now been released. We'll do that right now. Alan Henning, because of our parliament's decision to attack the Islamic State, I, as a member of the British public, will now pay the price for that decision. The blood of David Haynes was on your hands, Cameron. Alan Henning will also be slaughtered, but his blood is on the hands of the British Parliament. You know, the truth is you never get used to seeing these. This has happened far too often. We keep getting these videos, it seems now almost weekly, and there's, there's just no getting used to it. Uh, one wonders how this will impact on, um, on how the president moves forward, how the British government moves forward as we now continue this, this battle, uh, as we've been reporting all day. It has not gone all that well in this past week. The question now becomes, will this latest video change the approach, uh, the United States, the British government? Will it change how we prosecute this, this war? I don't know what else to call it, this war over in, uh, in, in northern Iraq and Syria. And if this will be the trick that uh, gets us into this a little bit deeper. I know that we can't keep seeing these videos week after week without some form of reaction. And you know what? Maybe that's exactly what ISIL is looking for, something that needs to be debated, but it can't be debated if Congress doesn't return to Washington to have the debate. Enough with the campaigning, enough with trying to keep their jobs. I'm going to editorialize here. They need to come back to Washington. If nothing else possibly good comes from this latest horrible episode, maybe that will be it. I got to switch gears now, which is very hard to do in a situation like this, but we got to move on. So we're going to do this with our friend Rob Williams, who is uh, our money guy around here at Newsmax. Rob, let's All let's right. sum up what's happened today. Let's start with the news that came in this morning, which was the, the employment numbers. Yeah, well, it was a very positive uh, jobs report all the way around. Um, the um, unemployment rate dipped to 5.9 percent. Much more than expected, yes? Yep. Uh, economists on Wall Street were looking for 6.1 percent. So now we're down in the fives, which uh, is kind of getting near an area where people consider maximum employment. Right. But you so. know, the question I think that everybody has, in, in the past, we never really took into, into consideration this whole issue of how many have left the workforce permanently right. and how that figures in the number. It yeah. does seem to me that we're only talking about a 30-day time period and a right. reduction of 0.2. Mm -hmm. That can't all be people leaving the workforce, now can it? Uh, well, I, I think there, with people leaving the workforce, it's part of a broader demographic trend. But this would have to be mostly people going back to work, yes? Right. Um, with with the, yeah, this week with the uh, the report that we saw, it was very positive. Uh, almost 250,000 jobs were created, which is, uh, which is good. Bad. Yeah, it is good. I think it it was higher than expected. Uh, a good chunk of it, let's say around 15,000, were attributed to uh, the, the grocery store market basket. Those workers in Massachusetts going back to work. So quickly, so quickly, because we don't have a lot of time. Okay. One thing that I am curious about, you know, normally when you see a jobs number like this you begin to wonder if the stock market's going to slide because it might push the Fed to, to tighten up on the money policy a little bit quicker. And yet, after a week of sliding, the market did finish up today, didn't it? It did. Um, and Why? Uh, well, I think it was due for a seasonal bounce, and I expect it to fall next week. Oh, so, so. you think the fund's <laughs> not going to last? I don't think so. Rob Williams. You heard it here first. Always fun to get your very depressing uh, analysis of what's going to happen. I have to go home and sell now, but I, I'm oh, a little okay. more hopeful. So that was Rob Williams, Newsmax Money News Deputy Financial Editor. For more in-depth financial analysis, go to moneynews.com. Coming up next, the very best of Give Me Five.